Hi everyone, my name is Jamie and I am the owner operator of Amber Rain Designs. If you haven't had a chance to meet me before, you can usually find me at the Regina Farmers Market here in Saskatchewan or um, I do have a wonderful Etsy online store which ships across uh, Canada and North America and occasionally I get lucky enough to um, sell my wares internationally as well. So I'm, I'm very, very grateful for what I do and I hope you guys enjoy my video. So for more information, I will post my link below, but this is my information, Amber Rain. And what I'm going to be showing you guys today is how to make a beautiful pair of earrings. So we're going to be making the Druzy earrings. I'm sure you've seen them out there before. They've got beautiful sparkle to it. And um, they're easy enough to assemble if you were to buy the pieces separate online. But what I'm going to show you guys today is how to actually make these druzies from start to finish. And what that means is that we're going to create a mold. I'll show you guys how to create a mold. I'll, try, I'll show you guys how to create the actual pieces. And then I'll show you how the druzy stones are made after the mold is complete. So. It is a little bit of a longer video, but I hope you guys enjoy the process. So a lot of times when you go to create a mold, you need to make your, your little piece first. So I do have an example of the Druzy. Uh, it's just a beautiful little sparkly piece. Now this is set in resin, so it is hard. But if you were to um, go ahead and create something maybe you have a vision in your head maybe you want to make earrings that are in the shape of a moon a star a heart you know or you have some other fantastic idea but you don't know how to mass produce it or create it this is where you're going to start you're going to be using something called sculpey um, plaster mold anything that is um, that you can shape and create into your ideal piece so um, if I wanted to, I could just quickly make this into, um, you know, soften it up, make it into a little moon. Then using some of the tools, you could add some texture to it uh, and create yourself a, a beautiful moon shaped earring. Then you would want to repeat that process over and over again until you have the, the same depth, the same uh, width so that you have matching earrings. And then what you're going to be doing is you're going to be taking that moon or whatever shape that you make and you're going to be adhering it to your plastic. So what I have here is actually some empty takeout containers. Thank you COVID for um, allowing us to have some extras at home. And like I said, what you would do is you would take this little mold, whatever you've created, or maybe you've purchased some things online that you'd like to replicate um, for your own use. This is how you would do it. So what I like to do is I like to tack it down with some cheap glue. I'm not going to be using um, a heavy duty epoxy because I want to be able to reuse whatever I've inserted in here after. The, the mold that we're making does not wreck what goes into the dish. So I just want to set it lightly. So this glue I actually have from the dollar store. And uh, it's a nice, a nice little glue to tack it down. Um, also, before I get started, I want to know how much of the material to put into here. So what I did prior to this video is I took water and I put it up to just big enough to cover up the mold so that I'm not wasting materials. And I figured out that I used about three quarters of a cup. Okay, so that would be about six ounces altogether. And then, just for the sake of saving time, I'll go ahead and see, show you guys that I have tacked most of these down, a little bit got moved, but I tacked most of these down into the bowl already. So this is now good for you. This is, this is what my mold is going to look like when it's all done. So when I say the rubber silicone mold, um, what it is, it's a... It's a mold that can be reused over and over and over again so that you can get your earrings or whatever it is, pendants, 
that you can reuse over and over again. It's really nice and flexible. You don't have to worry about it cracking. Um, with these little dishes, they actually come with lids because they're takeout dinner, dinner. So after you're done using it, you could just put your silicone mold back into the dish and save it for later. And what I'm gonna be using today is Mold Star 15 Slow, okay? So this is a two-part series here, A and B, and how this works, it's a ratio of one to one. So I need three ounces of this and three ounces of this one in order to make it work, okay? So I went ahead and got my three ounces. Another little tip that I did is I measured three ounces into the cup prior to um, pouring my part A and part B, and then I marked it so that I would be able to have equal in both cups. Because it is a little bit darker, you're not gonna be able to see exactly when it covers the line. So I thought this would be a great way on the outside to mark what I needed. So three ounces in each, and I'm just gonna give it another little stir. This is one of these uh, molds that you really, really, really need to um, make sure that they're well stirred before mixing together. And then another reason why I tack these down, just I, I don't know if I made myself clear enough, but if you don't tack them down prior to pour, pouring the silicone mold in, they will actually float, okay? Your, whatever you put in there will float. And don't ask me how I know that because it is a sad, sad story. Um, <laughs> but it was a, a mold save for another day, I guess. So what I'm doing is I'm pouring the epoxy, or not epoxy, but the silicone mold, uh, A into cup B. Make sure that I got everything. And then we're going to mix this up. And as you can see, it's going to turn into a, a lighter shade of blue here. And I want to make sure that I've got everything all mixed up in there good before I pour. Okay. So now we're just going to make sure that there's nothing in our little bowl here before we pull, pour to get set into the epoxy and wreck our molds. I do see a little hair there, but it's okay. And then we're slowly gonna pour it in. I like to do it from the side so that we're not actually pouring in on the objects. If you pour it in across the wall, it will naturally flow over so you don't really have to worry too much about um, setting any of your pieces loose that you've put into there. And then always have your supplies ready. I think as a crafter, I think what takes up the most time is remembering, oh, I forgot to get this, oh, I forgot to get that. Uh, so I always like to have extra everything. There's paper towel off to the side here. There's cups and sticks for everything, just for cleanup. I do want to let you guys know that um, I am no, in no way a professional when it comes to um, making this kind of stuff. I like to have fun just like everybody else. I like to craft, I like to try new ideas. And if they work, then they work. And if they don't, well, then they don't. But um, I've definitely had some fun working with the resin. And I, I can't wait to show you some more pieces here in a few minutes of what I've done. So what I'm doing is I'm just lightly tapping. I want to get those air bubbles out of here. And um, 
and then I can let that sit overnight and we'll come back to it and show you how to do the rest, okay? See you soon. Okay, so we're coming back. Um, the shelf life for the silicone mold is, it actually says it's four hours. So the cure time to demold is four hours, but that is weather dependent, um, how cold your room is, how hot your room is, if it's a little bit moist outside. I did try to take a peek at it um, after four hours yesterday and you can see that it was not cured. So um, in, in a couple spots. So these guys aren't very good. And what I've done is I've just I left it alone for the rest of the time, came back uh, about 12 hours later, and you can see that these molds are just beautiful, perfect. And the way that they sit, that they're gonna produce some really nice um, shiny druzies. And so uh, most of these are, are workable molds. I'm just taking out all of these little guys here. And then we'll get on to the process of how to actually make the earrings themselves now that you have a mold. You can see this one here, it didn't quite um, work. Like I, I could definitely cut this out so that I could get to the mold. But what that means is that I didn't glue it down tight enough. Um, so just make sure that you're gluing it down. And like I said, use this this glue because uh, these pieces come off really easily and then they can be reused for future. I want to show another example of a mold um, that I created um, a while ago and it's a mermaid tail one. And then these guys here are my little mermaid tails that are set and dried. And so these are cured and then they can be made into um, earrings at any time. These ones are little clear ones with diamonds, all sorts of little sparkles and stuff that you put into them. Okay, so um, like I said, we're going to go ahead and sh show you how to make the mold. So what I'm using today is Art Resin um, Epoxy. It is a two part, again, another A and another B. I make quite a bit out of resin. Um, I make beautiful, beautiful artwork. So I require the big jugs. You do not have to get the big jugs. Another um, example of work that I do with resin is uh, big, beautiful uh, picture frames like this, where I can make ooh, really nice artwork out of it. So you can get the um, the smaller jugs off of Amazon or Michaels or wherever you're going to get it if you just want to experiment. And um, I don't think it costs more than than twenty or thirty dollars. Don't quote me on that. But um, so what I did again is I've got equal parts of part A and part B of the resin, and then we're just going to go ahead and mix that up. You want to make sure that you get equal for both part and B, A and B. Again, it's super, super, super important. If you have to get a little scale to weigh it out, um, definitely do that because if you don't, you're going to end up with non-workable material. Okay. Um, trust me, I've, I've built some gorgeous things and got to the last layer and uh, rushed it, didn't didn't do it properly, and then the uh, last layer became tacky, and then all that work went by the wayside. So you want to make sure that you are um, stirring correctly, nice and nice and even. And you're gonna see that there's a lot of bubbles in here, um, but don't worry about it. I'm gonna show you how to get rid of those bubbles in a little bit. Now, uh, for today, I wanted to make um, green earrings and I bought these all online. These are basically uh, colorings for resin. For me, 
I'm never putting these objects onto myself. I'm never uh, putting them close to my skin. If they're going to be in earrings, they are actually going to be um, in a setting so that they never touch anything. So I get stuff from a lot of strange places. So it might not be the best, but it definitely works for the colors. And I want a lot of green. I want to make it dark green. So what I'm doing here is a, a good example is this one is silver. I don't want anybody to see the back and see clear or any other color. So I actually want to make, I want to go ahead and make the resin green as well. Um, probably a nice dark green so that when I put the uh, glitter on, it just really blends in well. You get all fancy with these colors. I've gone ahead and done that. Now, uh, the next thing I'm going to be using is the epoxy metallic color pigment. You can get little sample sizes. You can get the big jars like what I'm doing. You know what? Um, you might have seen people pour it into the resin. You definitely don't have to do that. That is a huge waste of materials. What I like to do is I like to take my paintbrush and I'm just going to go in and I'm going to paint the insides. That way I get my sparkly beautiful color. It's adhered because it's it's got the resin. It's not going anywhere uh, but I'm not wasting a whole bunch of this and then I can reuse it for all sorts of molds over and over and over and over again. So I just really want to grind that into each and every little spot. If you're doing uh, multiple colors, like if you're doing a green and a blue, um, you really don't have to worry about cleaning the molds because you'll get some really nice like designs, be a little bit more unique. So again, um, like I said, you can use, I've got, I've got every color underneath the rainbow for the resin, um, glitter. And this is the stuff that you'll see in the bigger uh, projects where they make those, you know, beautiful glitter tables and and all sorts of that. So I'm just going to skip out on the on the two that didn't work over here. No point pouring those. if that one was a good one or not but we'll make it anyways okay almost done I just like to get it in everywhere that I can. And just in case I put a little bit too much, a little bit extra, I just want to give it a, a quick little tap and brush that away. And then I'm ready to pour. So like I said, I have my um, my color here. It doesn't have to be exact. You know, like sometimes um, you're in the middle of something and maybe you just have one extra. You can make it with any color, really. You're not going to see it come through, but I always like to have it kind of matchy-matchy. Um, now for me, you don't want to pour this over the entire mold. You kind of just want to get it in each little spot here. And then using that same popsicle stick, you can um, make it even. If you get it all like too much into the mold, what's gonna happen is you're gonna have a lot of grinding to do after or cutting. And I just wanna make your life easier. So I'll, I'll just show you how to 
use the stick and then all you're doing is just getting that even. You don't want any extra. And now I just want to remind you that I in no way claim to be any sort of master at making these. If you have a better method, by all means, please use it. If it works for you, do it. Um, so you'll notice that I did make a lot extra and that's okay because I have a lot of molds here that I um, want to be using here in a little bit. So. I notice that there's a hair in this one. I'll get that out. Um, so something that I picked up, I believe from Canadian Tire a long time ago was this little micro jet torch. And I mentioned that there was bubbles before. What we're gonna do is we're just gonna make sure to get those bubbles out. Now for the earrings, it's not really gonna make that big of a difference because you're putting them into posts. Um, but for bigger projects like that, um, really big seashell one that I showed you, or if you're making a piece um, that's a little bit different and uh, you'll definitely wanna get the bubbles out so those don't show. And this is a really good example here of what to do with your extra resin. So I always keep extra molds. This is just one that I bought um, online and this is for to make different size rings. So what I would do here is I would put that same glitter inside this ring and then if I had any extra material I could actually make myself um, a ring for later. I have uh, all sorts of different molds down below. I'm going to um, move this to the side fill up my little mermaid ones because I might as well make that at the same time. And I will see you guys in a little bit when it sets, okay? Bye. Okay guys, so welcome back. Um, fast forward 24 hours uh, that the resin has been setting and as you can see I have some extra molds. Whenever I have resin that I'm working with, I always make sure to have all sorts of dis different extra molds in case I have um, more resin than what I know to do with so that I can make all sorts of beautiful objects. So um, really nice example is the, the little dragon medallion. But going back to our mold here, you're going to see that um, all of our resin has set and uh, I had a chance, I did, I did pluck one out just to check and see how it is and it's absolutely gorgeous. So um, what I have here is our resin earring. Remember how we use that glitter just on the outside? I don't know if you guys can see this, but I'll try and zoom it in in editing. But I have a beautiful metallic green uh, earring. It's got all that sparkle to it. 
So then after that, uh, what I like to do is I like to take either really fine scissors and just clean up the outside of it um, so that it's all set. I will press them so that they lay flat um, and then I'm going to let them dry or cure um, for another, honestly I leave them for up to a week before I start using them just so that they're nice and, and solid and a combined piece. So I've got so many beautiful pieces in here. Um, the light resin just kind of goes off and I've got myself a beautiful pair of metallic earrings. Like I said, I like to do the extras. So I had my, um, my little mermaid tails here as well set up. So I have all of those. I had bigger size earrings um, set up as well. So uh, rings, I pulled out a ring out of the ring mold. So I have a cute little ring that I can wear or sell later on. And just all sorts of little doodads. There's a little bangle. Make sure to always have a, a area that you can mess up because the resin gets really, really uh, sticky and wrecked. And we'll see if we can't get this out. But thank you guys for joining me. I hope you enjoyed how to learn how to make the resin earrings. And then it's as simple as attaching um, them to any post of your choice with some really good glue. I prefer E6000, which is my glue of choice and uh, many crafters glue of choice when adhering it to the posts. Um, make sure when you're buying posts that you wanna make sure, <laughs> make sure, make sure that um, you're getting really good ones because you don't want anything gross being in your ears. You wanna have stainless steel or sterling silver, or something good that you know where it came from. Okay, so thank you so much for joining me. Again, it's Jamie from Amber Rain, and have a great night.